Okay, this is the first one of these we've done. Uh, Lynn and I have been uh, reviewing wines at this counter for the last 21 years, and this is the first time we've ever done it on camera. But anyway, we have a really interesting wine this afternoon. Actually, it's late afternoon, almost evening. But uh, it's the uh, my favorite neighbor Cabernet from Paso Robles, California. Uh, the story behind this is that uh, Eric Jensen of Booker um, started this as an offshoot of his Booker wines and my favorite neighbor is named after his neighbor uh, the winemaker at La Venture, one of the finest wineries in Paso Robles with a French winemaker named Stephen Aceo um, and I know that Stephen makes some of the nicest wines in Paso Robles so uh, it's, it's a, a good naming. Um, the funny thing about this is I've never heard of this wine before. Uh, my staff got a hold of it with a tasting and uh, Matt my partner and uh, Carly, our general man our manager in, uh, in Fishers, got very excited about this wine. Um, and then they bought 10 cases. And when some, they buy 10 cases of a $65 wine, it catches my attention. You know, as in, guys, what are you thinking? Um, however, we'd had a number of uh, our better customers had really become engaged with this wine and um, had actually bought cases of it. So I finally decided I needed to find out what this was all about. And then I understood why they took the last 10 cases. Actually, they were the last 10 cases in the state. But uh, this wine is really interesting. Um, and, you know, Paso Robles is, is, is an interesting place because of that huge perennial shift they get there. It's one of the warmest places in California. And the real danger in making wine there is you can make it too ripe. But when you get it right, sometimes they really get it right. And I think these guys got it right. And I'm going to let Linda, we just reviewed it a few minutes ago, and she's going to kind of go through the bullet points on what we thought of it. So as, as Doug said, this is our first time for doing it on camera. So we decided we're probably safer tonight to review it in advance. So we have some notes we can share and uh, tell you why we thought this was a really good wine. And we're really glad that Carlene and Matt pointed it out to us. It starts with this really nice spicy black raspberry nose. It's just a, a it's not a Napa nose. It does not have cedar on it uh, as a Cabernet, but it, it's a really nice spicy, but it's not the hot nose you sometimes get in Paso. And then it, the palate is really lots of black raspberry, lots of blackberry. It has some, uh, some nuances that have, of, of vanilla, dark chocolate, even some notes of spice and coffee on it. One of you said tobacco, but I really don't pick that up. I, I, Did didn't, I didn't really get it. Yeah. I didn't really get it. By yeah. the way, this, this wine is extremely highly acclaimed, and we've been going through reading the notes that other people have written since Jeb Dunnick had given it a, 90, given it a 96 point score, uh, Wine Advocate a 94, and Venice uh, a 95. But it's really well structured. It has very smooth, integrated tannins, which I think is what has caught everyone's attention that they really like. It's a big wine, but it's not over alcohol. Paso can sometimes be a little too ripe, and this is just a balanced wine that tastes really good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very approachable now, and uh, will only get better in the cellar. In fact, most of the people who reviewed it, and in the reviews that you're probably seeing right now in the, in the newsletter, um, I'll say that this wine is good from somewhere between 2036 and 2038. So this is a long-term keeper, but i got to tell you, it's so approachable now. It's very drinkable. So, cheers. Cheers.